My name is Marin. We're gonna be seeing Sarah in a little while for our activity portion of the video. But for now, we're gonna start with a lesson. Today, we're talking about identification and the resources you can use to ID different things. Okay, so first things first, uh, when we identify something, we have to observe a lot of specific things about it. So maybe the size, the color, the shape, and this can be used for birds, plants, animals, spiders, bugs, caterpillars, butterflies, anything you can think of, we can ID in a specific way. So the first way that I'm going to suggest is going to your library and looking for an identification book. I have a bunch of identification books over here, so I'm gonna show you some differences between them. This one right here is one that's used by professional uh, plant, people who study plants, so we've got uh, botanists, and this one has, you can see inside, it's got a drawing on one side and then a bunch of information about the plant on the other. And like I said, this one's for professionals. So you can absolutely use this one, uh, but you might find that it has a lot of information that you maybe don't understand that you might have to look up later, or it has information that you're not as interested in. Um, but it will be able to tell you uh, the species name, the common name, what it looks like, and that can help you identify something in the field. So. We have things like that that a professional might use um, that have black and white drawings and lots and lots of information. We also have ones with color drawings in them. So this one is birds of North America and this one is spiders and their kin. Um, so if we open these up, we're able to see a bunch of different hummingbirds um, or other birds, that's just what I opened up to, but it shows um, lots of different colorations. So then you could look and see, oh, you know what? I saw a hummingbird just like that and it says it's a broad-tailed hummingbird. So ID books like this can be really useful. I can show you the inside of the spider one as well. We got different spiders. And these books will usually have a little guide at the front that just says, hey, this is how you use this book. Here's some tips on how to use it. So these are really good. The last kind of book is one with pictures. So we had ones with black and white drawings, ones with colored drawings, and sometimes ones with photographs are best um, because they can show us exactly what it looks like. Drawings can be really useful because they can emphasize certain parts of a plant or an animal that you might not, it might be really hard to spot in the wild and they can say, hey, this part is bright red. So you gotta look for that little tiny spot that's bright red, but the photographs will show you a very realistic version of it. So those are the different kinds of books you can use. Uh, you can also find books that are specific to an area. This one is Plants and Flowers of Tahiti. So this one wouldn't be very useful here in Utah, but if you ever are going somewhere new, maybe check out a field guide of plants or birds or other species that you want to identify while you're in that new. And remember guys, it's really, really useful to write things down in your field journal when you identify them in a book. Let's say you find an identification about a really cool spider that you like. You write it down in here. You write down the characteristics that show that it's that spider. So maybe the size, maybe it's got a specific shape on it, maybe the color, any of those things. You write it down in here. <laughs> then when you're out in the field, if you see that specimen again, you see that same spider that you saw before, um, and you can't quite remember what it is, you can refer back to your field journal where you said, oh my gosh, it was this exact kind of spider and this is the kind of web it spins and you have all your information right there for when you're out in the field. And you don't have to take all your heavy books with you. Now, I'm also gonna show you guys some apps that you can use. Um, there's lots of things that you can just Google. If you just type into Google, caterpillar identification, um, it'll pull up tons of different ways to identify caterpillars, and you can put in the size, you can put in the color, maybe what kind of plant it was on, and it will help you identify that. Um, but there are also specific apps for that. So I'm gonna show you. I have one called Merlin. It's right here. It's got a little bird on it, okay? And we open it up and it will help us do a bird ID. Sarah's gonna show us how to do it with that one. We also have iNaturalist right here. It's got a little green bird on it. That one's really helpful because you can submit photos and other people can help you identify them. So 
we're gonna check out how to use, uh, how to identify some things using those apps. Let's go over to Sarah, see what she's got. Okay, everybody, we're gonna be practicing our activity for today, which is to identify a bird. So this is what we're gonna do. We've got our quails here. We're gonna look at them, and we're gonna go to the Merlin app, which I'll show you what looks like. We're gonna navigate through the process to try and identify a bird that we don't know. We're gonna pretend that we have no idea what bird this is, and we'll say that we saw it today. So let's, let's check it out. Alrighty, everybody. So we're gonna go to our Merlin app, which I just downloaded easily on you know the Apple Store, Google Play, all that good stuff. So that's this app right here. And we're gonna just go through their first questions. Where did we see the bird? I'm gonna say my current location here in Provo. And the date today is August 14th. So we're gonna say today. What size is this bird? Our options are sparrow sized or smaller, or robin sized, or crow sized, or goose sized, and you can kind of choose in between. These birds are kind of this option, the between the robin and the crow. Okay, and then we have to do their colors. They're kind of already selected. The black, gray, and kind of brown. Let's say next. And where it was, where was this bird? It was on the ground. You can see kind of how they're positioned that they would be on the ground. Okay, and it's gonna create a list of possible birds for us. Boom, first one right away, California quail. We can see, okay, this is our guy. And I will click, yes, this is my bird. Okay, so what do you do if you have no idea what to do on Merlin? You have no idea what to do in your books? You can ask your community. This is where iNaturalist comes in. This is this app with kind of the green bird on it. It has a good explanation of how iNaturalist works. So what you do is you go out, you observe, you can take a picture of, it can be a bird, an animal, a plant, truly just about anything alive. It has to be a full photo that's pretty clear. And then you can post that onto iNaturalist. And if you know how to identify it, you can put what you think it is under your identification of your photo and then other people will either confirm or say that your identification is wrong and so as you get more people confirming that your identification is right then it becomes more solidified or people will say oh that's not quite right i've seen that somewhere else so you can have, have a discussion board but then you're contributing to the natural world in your community it's a discussion you're creating a stronger database all together with fellow scientists and your neighborhood Okay, everybody, thanks for tuning in. So make sure that you go out this week, use those apps, go to the library and get some books. Just try to identify something all by yourself and let us know what it is. Post in the comments, get on our Facebook page and let us know what you've identified. As well, we'd also like to throw a plug in for Citizen Science on our museum website. There's some challenges out there to use Merlin and to use iNaturalist to rack up your points. So look there, this is your time to do it. We'll see you guys next week.